Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So this video is going to be more of a vlog style video rather than being a uh, kind of full, I guess, descriptive video like I normally do with these 3D prints. What is this thing? So this here is a modular rail system. How did I do rail system in air quotes? Doesn't matter. It is the uh, sequel and successor to the 3D printed clamp. I'm just going to go out and say it. This thing is dumb. This thing does not work. This thing does not function. A couple of reasons being this thing doesn't grip well. This It's way too floppy. It also needs to have a really long screw or all thread with um, a little end cap on it or something. It wasn't even a good idea. I mean, the whole point of this thing was to make a way to hold up wires or something, hold stuff up underneath the desk. Temporary, not temporary, but like the ability to move it around without being fully permanent. Yeah, this thing is an absolute failure, so we don't really talk about this guy. So with this thing, I basically threw out the temporary part and just said, let's go full permanent. But if I was gonna make something permanent, I wanted to make sure we could use it for other things, something more modular. That's why it has a bunch of holes and a bunch of slots. And if you've watched the uh, headphone stand video, or even even the even the clamp short, uh, you kind of know what these slots are going to be used for. At this point, it's a trope in my projects. Uh, it's for a quarter twenty nut. This just slots into the rail like so, and it gives us a nice little threaded mounting point uh, for. A screw. So these holes here are going to be the mounting holes for uh, accessories. Now I don't have any accessories built right now or designed or anything, but um, we have this thing here. Uh, you know what? I might as well just go over the history of the design here and why we ended up with this. So this thing was supposed to be designed with a quick detach system, and you're probably looking at this thing being like, that's not very quick detach. Well, it isn't. And the reason why I kind of scrapped the quick detach system, well, it's not fully scrapped. It would just complicate the print more. This thing would become even more complex and the design process would be really annoying. So I kind of shelved it because we can just make a quick detach module for this thing here, right? Just attach it, screw it in, and then all the little things you wanna attach to the quick detach system, you can just do. That's kind of why I settled on this design here because, well, it's modular. We can add to it, we can add on to it. I realized too that if I had a quick detach system, that's designed to be mounted underneath the desk, I can't use this thing elsewhere, like a wall. We could use this to wall mount things if we wanted to, which is currently where the six inch model of this thing is being used. Uh, this is the 12 inch model. So yeah, all those little ideas started showing up and I realized, oh, well, if we just make it even simpler, the simpler we make it, the more uh, useful it can be. That's kind of what this thing is here. Uh, this right here is kind of a module example test piece kind of looks like that these slots here remove the uh kind of sideways rotation here it's not fully tightened down so there's a little bit of rotation but it removes most of it so it doesn't rotate around also down here these little channels here not sure what i'm gonna do with those uh we're not too sure uh this by the way is printed abs and uh i just realized this thing has kind of a a warp in the middle i knew i knew going into this that abs warps uh, i just didn't realize that it warps after you take it off the print bed and it cools off and uh, you spend maybe a few hours not interacting with it. I mean, if it's screwed down to something, I don't think it's a big problem. I mean, all, all the slots still work and everything, so. Oh yeah, this is a prototype part. Hole spacing was a, a lot wider back in the day. I figured if I brought the hole spacing in uh, more, we could put more uh, attachment points on a shorter piece here. So that's kind of what we have here. Oh, psh, I completely forgot. <laughs> these tapered holes here are for uh, these decking screws here. They just go in there like that. They don't sit completely flush, but when you screw them down with something like a, you know, a impact driver, uh, they'll lay flush to the, to the plastic. It doesn't crack it at all. It just kind of squishes in there, holds it in tight. The real reason why it sticks out is actually because of these little, uh, little bumps around the screw head here. That's the reason why it's sticking up like that. I didn't compensate for that, but. Uh, but anyway, I did mention there's a six inch version of this that's being used. So uh, let's go uh, take a look at it. There is the six inch model of the rail. It's holding up this uh, pegboard here. I would have used the pegboard for the pegboard PC, but I can't find it. But as you can see, it holds it pretty well. This thing is uh, not exactly the most heaviest thing, but 
It's not light either. This thing, I have bruised my foot by dropping it straight onto my toes, but uh, okay. I'm gonna say this right here too. This is not a perfect system. This, this thing probably stinks. There's probably a hundred other people out there, maybe even thousands, probably thousands of people who've come out with better designs than this. This is just a idea that I had. Quick and dirty is the base description of this thing. <laughs> Quick and dirty. We want to get it done fast. We want it to print fast and we want it to be somewhat easy to install. That's the whole goal of it. So strength, strength is not its main priority because it's only going to be holding up a few pounds underneath the desk. But I do want to know what its limits are, especially using ABS. Because ABS is supposed to be strong, so maybe it can hold up a bunch of weight. Thinking about attaching like the impact driver here, or uh, maybe this uh, socket set here. I also have a sledgehammer and some um, crowbars we could attach to this thing, see if it will hold it. Maybe I'll just mount this in the garage. And also, these are the default print settings on the Creality Slicer. Like, that's that's it. That that's what That's what this is. We could probably increase wall thickness or change the infill settings to be a lot more dense, a lot more stiff, but if it doesn't work with the default settings, then we'll adjust it, but uh, you know, that's kind of what it is. So this is printed flat like this. So all of the weakness is this direction and that direction, right? Cause that's where the uh, layer lines are. I was thinking if we print it this way, our weakness is now down and up. So this would pull this direction, which isn't good for an application like this, but underneath a desk that would be uh, better. This would be better, I guess, for underneath the desk. I also thought about printing it this way, which would be pretty strong because it would break this direction, but this is a very low surface area, so it would be pretty unstable. I also was considering printing it diagonally, either like this or like, uh, like, like that, I guess. I don't know, more support material, uh, a lot more waste in that but uh, may actually be stronger because some people print stuff diagonally just because of strength and stuff. Yeah, this thing I think is also being held on by two jack screws as well. So there's that, didn't crack or anything. So um, that's good. Yeah, we're still testing it. It's still, still in the testing phase, but there will definitely be more videos to come, uh, especially making modules for these things. And if you have suggestions for what we should attach to this pegboard here, let me know in the comments. Or if you have ideas for uh, modules, definitely would be appreciated if anyone had, has any ideas. Just want to say thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.